So now I invite Dr. Jivesh for his uh, talk. Hello, good afternoon. Discussing the topic of uh, techniques of uh, pan retinal uh, laser photocoagulation. So these are the most common indications uh, which we know of where the PRP is required. Uh, first of all is proliferative diaptic retinopathy. Uh, second is uh, CRVO as discussed, especially ischemic CRVOs. Third is ocular ischemic uh, syndrome with secondary neovascularization, which is seen in older group of patients or any kind of vasculitis which can be involving either uh, one of the sectors or uh, might be involving uh, whole of the retina. So here are the two uh, basic modes of uh, laser uh, which we know. There is slit lamp laser and uh, uh, laser with uh, your indirect ophthalmoscope. So slit lamp laser uh, further can be done with uh, the three different types. One is single spot or the conventional laser. Second is your multi-spot or uh, Pascal laser, the spellings are missing. Uh, right. Third is uh, a navigated laser which is a slightly more automated form of Pascal laser. I'll show you a small video in the end. And uh, the other variety which is indirect is uh, 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 that also we'll discuss further. So here I'm doing a small basic comparison of a single spot conventional laser with a multi-spot Pascal laser. A single spot laser uh, uh, can cause uh, larger collateral damage, whereas multi-spot Pascal laser is more energy efficient. It focuses mainly to the RP and the collateral damage is very less. Uh, there is good regression of disease with the uh, conventional laser, it's a single spot. Similar regression is seen with Pascal. Uh, now here are two important points, uh, single spot laser can usually take up to five times uh, more, it is more time consuming, can take up to five times more uh, as compared to doing a Pascal laser. Single spot laser is also known to cause more pain because it has a deeper penetration and uh, causes more photocoagulation and also thermal damage to the choroid, whereas Pascal laser is uh, increases the comfort of the patient and it is less painful for the patient. Regression is uh, more or less the same. With Pascal, there might be, uh, sometimes there might be difficulty, especially in hazy media where you're not able to achieve uh, proper uh, spots, then you can shift to a, your uh, single spot laser. Here I'll show you a small video. Uh, audio is working? If you want, I can uh, narrate. So, just one second, I'll, I'll just repeat the video. Okay, anyways, I, I'll narrate what's going on. So, here it is, uh, here we are showing a comparison of a single spot and a multi spot laser. Here they are showing the Pascal laser, which is having a short pulse as compared to the conventional pulse, which covers a, a lot of area, it damages the choroid, there is a lot of collateral damage as well as there is damage to the inner retina. So uh, you can see on histopathology also, short pulse uh, is causing a, a, a less uh, collateral damage as compared to our conventional single spot laser. One second. Yes. Uh, there's one more advantage of our Pascal laser that you can give uniform, high efficiency burns with equidistant uh, as compared to the conventional, which you really cannot uh, control your uh, uh, where you're aiming and it has a lot of more collateral damage as well. So this is the basic technique of a slit lamp laser where you need to uh, use a topical anesthesia to the patient, have good midriasis. You need to use a coupling agent uh, with your uh, PRP lens. Can be anything, either be CMC or uh, viscoelastic, which we use in our surgeries. Adjust the magnification brightness and adjust the laser perimeters. I will discuss laser perimeters just shortly. Then, uh, as discussed by Pranav, that uh, you should avoid basically any neovascular zone because that's the site of, it can be a site of active bleeding post laser also at the time of laser also. So mainly you have to fo focus on your avascular areas and ischemic areas. So uh, this is a, a screenshot which has been taken from a, a, a Pascal laser. So here are your parameters. 
uh, first of all the status which needs to be ready before your laser then your power uh, for pascal it is around 400 for conventional laser it is around 200 to 300 then the spot diameter which we most commonly use for prp is uh, 200 microns and uh, exposure time uh, is shorter for pascal laser it is around 20 milliseconds as compared to your conventional laser it is around 100 to 150 milliseconds So this is the lens, uh, the Mainster PRP lens uh, by Ocular, which is the most common lens used for uh, our photo calculation. Uh, we need to note that uh, the image magnification of this lens is approximately 0.5. So the laser spot magnification will become 1.96. That is, if you're giving a 200, uh, if you set your parameters to 200 micron, your actual burn on the retina will be approximately 400 microns. Uh, then uh, it gives a, uh, the, it gives you 165 degrees of field. So these are some other lenses by Vogue. This equator lens is for your, especially for your grid laser. And this is a similar uh, quadrant aspheric lens is for your pan retinal laser. So uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is an important slide. Because we, uh, we do our uh, pan retinal photocalculation in three settings. Uh, I have already discussed the pulse duration and the power settings. So first of all, you have to cover the uh, inferior retina you can uh, cover your nasal uh, retina also along with that what it will do in case uh, inadvertently if you hit a neovascular uh, zone which can cause a bleeding so it will gravitate down and it will remain in your lower quadrant only but it uh, for your next second or third settings it won't fill up the full retina so you can still follow your prp2 and prp3 later on so that is the logic of starting your prp uh, inferiorly so this is uh, a pattern scanning laser. It is a semi-automatic uh, pattern scanning laser photocalculation system. We already discussed. Uh, these points have also we have discussed. It is a higher efficiency uh, because of low collateral damage. It has reduced time of treatment. Patient comfort is obviously increased because uh, the pain uh, felt by the patient is less. Uh, precision is there. Equidistant burns are there, and it is it has a good reproducibility. Uh, this is the second system LIO. Uh, this, uh, in case uh, the in case of pan retinal photocalculation, this is mostly used where we are having a hazy media, especially in dense cataracts or you already have some amount of vitreous hemorrhage. Uh, there, you won't be able to uh, finish your laser with uh, your conventional single spot or Pascal. Then you need to bring in the LIO. It has a steep learning curve. Uh, other than that, it is specifically for pan retinal photocalculation. It is only mainly for the conditions with hazy media. Uh, this uh, this is a, a short video where I'll be showing you. Uh, this is uh, basically a, pa a Pascal simulator. Audio is not working, so uh, I'll keep you following on. So uh, this is a uh, this is an advanced uh, audio summary. Multiple hemorrhages you increase the in all quadrants. There is extensive exudation in the macular area in between the orchids, and we can also see some amount of subhyoid hemorrhage just beneath the inferior orchid, just taking up some shape. So when we start the laser, we have to first see that the laser is in ready state or standby state. To begin with, it is in standby. You should put it to ready. Power should be adjusted. Normally, power up to 300 to 400 is enough. Spot diameter, we'll keep it as 200 microns. Exposure time is 20 millisecond. And we'll use a standard 5 into 5 grid with one spacing to be. Uh, here one spacing means uh, uh, it is keeping a difference of exact exactly uh, one spot size in between we can reduce the spacing if we want a more efficient and uh, uh, like a, a more strong laser in case we already have some amount of vitreous hemorrhage i'll continue the video again so we start in the periphery we see uniform laser burns which are dirty gray in color. That is the color which we are aiming for. It should not be extensively bright. Otherwise, it's mean, it means we are using energy which is more than required. 
so we can because change because if it's an extensive disease we can reduce the spacing also what it will do it will give more compact burns although it might take up more time but if the patient requires uh, a better coverage we can do so for the macular area we have specific patterns uh, dr like pranav had discussed these are uh, pre built patterns uh, which they have for grid laser uh, which the laser which you have to start basically 750 microns uh, away from your uh, uh, center of the fovea and compare the single spot burns no, we will see spot burns it takes more time and it is not as uniform we might also have uneven spacing of the burns as well as overlapping of the burns uh, that's it uh we'll be giving you a demonstration once ha huh. so this is uh, nebulas it is just a more automated form of your uh, pascal laser it is developed uh, it is uh, been uh, developed around uh, 10 years back Uh, here you can incorporate you can take a photograph incorporate in the machine it has automatic features that it will uh, avoid hitting the optic disc and the macula and it has preset patterns which can complete the laser for you uh, it, it took up a small video uh, from their site only just to show you so here you can see uh, the uh, the pattern in which the laser has to be followed has already been pre planned and you just need to sit there to see it being executed this is the most uh, advanced form of uh, pascal laser i think which is available till date thank you